I'm joined by a really cool guy, Martin Bertel. Uh, just been having some chats with him and we're lucky that we get to talk to him. So a little bit of background on him is he worked with the tourism board for many, many years and then he switched into his retirement. I mean, you seem like the guy who can't stop working. You just love to keep doing things because now he's he's on the committee that runs the track here in St. Moritz. And so how long have you been running the track for? Since 40 years. <laughs> There you go. That's it right there. So I was asking him before we jumped on because we were talking about stories. Um, bobsled is such a big piece of Sam Moritz. Like, how did it start? Like, how do you, how do you, yeah, how did it all start here? Uh, bobsled was a part of the Crest Run. The Crest Run was built the first time in 1884. And uh, the St. Moritz Tobogganing Club was founded at the same year. So, and that's only skeleton. That's the Cresta skeleton. That's the mother of, of skeleton sport. So skeleton was here first, first. Yes, it was first. And then afterwards in uh, 1895, 96, they started to connect or to build two skeletons uh, together and ride it on the road from St. Moritz down to Celerina. Mm -hmm. And that was the start of bobsleigh, more or less. And uh, there was a company here, the Mattis, he started to build also bobsleighs. And then there was the first bobsleigh, uh, two men, f more four men and five men or five people because always there was always a, a woman on the, uh, on the sled. And they started to run on the, on the, on the, on the, ro on the road down to Celerina. But the, on the other hand, the Cresta was already built. So the Cresta people, the skeleton people from the same Ritz Tobogganing Club, they ha already had a run. And then uh, the bobsleigh, more or less the same people said, oh, we do also need a bobsleigh club, bobsleigh. So the uh, St. Moritz Bobsleigh Club was uh, founded in 97. Yeah, take a look at this. 97. We are now 125 years old and we uh, have our big celebration this year or we had it already it was wonderful and since then the, the track was built on the same in the same line more or less in the same line they had some different uh, finish parts but uh, more or less since 1904 the same track uh, built on snow so i didn't know this that it was two skeleton sleds that made a bobsled no, so i didn't more or less the start yeah so skeleton's the og you know what OG means? Yeah. yeah, skeleton's the OG of bobsled. In principle, yes. yes. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but how they explain it here, yeah. maybe they had other toboggans at the same time, but uh, it started here like yeah. this. Because I see there's like statues around town or like I went uh, on the Cresta Run, there's that street and there's a skeleton statue of a man and then you have a bobsled and I just, I just love how you guys really lean into the history of sliding here and it's just so cool so with the track it's unique here because obviously it's handmade which how long does it take from start to finish to make the track they need three weeks three weeks we need uh, 15,000 cubes of snow and 7,000 cubes of water like cubes like they cut cubes just cubes you know it's uh, like the measurement I'm sorry that was my bad that was my bad okay and then they build by hand. They make a mesh with uh, water and snow and they build it up by hand. Did you ever do this one year or do it with them? <laughs> no, it's a hard job. I don't know. No, yeah. no but it's, it's good to see if when you should come once yes. um, uh, and see how they build. It goes, you can see how they, it goes forward. Yeah. And it's not a measurement. It's not, uh, it's, it's only what hand and eye. It's like an art. Like it's like an art because some of the men have been working for 40 years at the track and and I heard about a book. I heard that there's a little tiny pocket book with written measurements like at this tree, you take 10 steps and you put the post. Is this true? This, this book belongs to one guy of the building team. Uh, Is it secret? Uh, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> quite secret. Have you... Know? you I haven't seen it. No, I have seen it, but they, they won't give it to us. They keep it in their in their head and in their... Uh, because they stay hard. Yeah. And they build the track together. And as they are finished, every guy from there, 15 more or less, has a turn 
and he is responsible a curve and he is responsible for this curve like he, like like his wife this is so <laughs> fascinating so each person's in charge of one curve yeah. so like if if one curve has bad ice it's his fault like if it's if it's bumpy ice or they something are, they are proud to do not to have problems on this yeah. turn yeah wow. well you can see it when you when you see the track and you see the races the ice just looks impeccable and incredible but this book so what happens will he ever pass this book down like how do you keep this knowledge in the family we will see what we are doing but uh, <laughs> we don't know these measurements yeah. we have a measurement in summer as the track looks in summer where the tracks go through and with the turns and we had to have the same in winter so we know approximately how much snow we need to build the track but uh, exactly we don't know so you can't build the track uh, along uh, with a plan yeah. because it took takes too much time you have they have to work immediately because three weeks is nothing for 100 1700 meter no. it's the longest and the biggest snow sculpture in the world yeah. and it's the longest track in the world like snow sculpture yes and then in terms of an athlete it is the longest track in the world so it's really a, a feat. I feel like this should be a wonder of the world. It really is so incredible and just so many things. But thank you for sharing all of this knowledge. This is what people want to know about, but they don't know just watching on TV and you are just like a secret vault. <laughs> You're a vault of secrets and stories. So thank you so much uh, for joining us. Now you guys know all the behind the scenes of the track and I just wanted to know about that book because I've been hearing about it. But of course, only a few people have seen it. So thank you. Yeah. Secret. Yeah, secret. We won't tell. You guys never heard this conversation. Oh, no, it's, okay. we it's fine. It's good. And you have to know this. And uh, because it's measurement and eyes. So the turns are always a little bit different. Yeah. Not really different because we also, also don't have a, a, a record of the, of the track. Yeah. It's a season record. Yeah. So uh, it's always a little bit different, but there is just little difference you know how many kids across my country in america they try and build a little s sled track in their front yard you could come consult these guys they pay big bucks and maybe they could give you the secrets of how of how they do it but thank you so much for joining us martin berto uh just uh, this was such a gift thank you for joining us and again did you get a did you get a good look at this patch because this was really this is like this is what it's about. So anyways, thank you so much, Martin Berto. Um, incredible. And we'll show you guys a lot more stuff with this FIL Studio Show.